Hey everybody, it's Mike from Here the Watchman, and, and we're here again today. Here, uh, it's the last day of the conference, and you know what? There's <laughs> hi, this guy. <laughs> he just he just landed from London. Just landed, Mike. Mark Can you Sutherland. See? God bless that. you, brother. It's so good to have you <laughs> here. It's so nice to be like together. Together, like, like we are. Instead of yeah. like uh, across the, the pond, pond, we actually look at this. We actually have a good connection. And we don't. And we it's brilliant. And we don't even need the piece of string and the camera. No, we, we don't have to do. We don't have to do anything. Yeah. So, Mark. I got to ask you first. Let's talk about the conference. Right. What has this conference been like for you? In, in some ways, this conference, on a personal level, has been quite different. In the fact that I've walked into a room and gone, there are loads of friends of mine here. It's been great. I've gone, but brilliant. And then we're, there's been a catch up, but there's been new relationships. There's been some great one-to-one uh, -one conversations, and I think. One of the highlights to me is been meeting two uh, dear people, Mario and Sarah, shout out to them, from um, New Zealand. Oh, really? New Zealand. You met them? I've met them, so we, uh, we have connected. So these dear people have flown, or been about 22 hours of mm -hmm. flying right. to get here, and plus then there's layovers and all that. So it's about you know at least two days of traveling to actually get here. Mm -hmm. Then to hear that you've had there's people here from Australia. Mm -hmm. So I'm just disappointed. How about how about uh, the other one from the Grand Caymans? That's well, they, well. those are. That's like a British colony, isn't it? Um, yes, I thought we didn't have any. Um, but yes, <laughs> uh, but maybe it is. But but what is fascinating about is just fantastic because of all the fact that we need to be connecting across across the globe. You know, it's really funny. I've got to get used to seeing you. I know. Like this, to look in there instead of it's, looking into you're my screen. The screen and make it and there there go, yeah, 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 wait, wait, So anyway. <laughs> Okay, that's Mark. It's real. It's real. Um, He's real. So, oh, let me ask you this: Here you are, yep. in Dallas, Texas. Absolutely. Weren't you supposed to leave the EU? Was that wasn't there something going yeah, on over there? Um, yeah, and I'm out of the country. Um, mm, what? Yeah, well, who's that um, woman? That, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, okay. It's a little bit of a concern. Yes, you're right. We were supposed to have left the EU on Friday, yep. uh, which was March the 29th. It has now, now been put back till April the 12th. Been put back to April the 12th. However, as far as I'm concerned, it's been back to April the 12th. The whole chaos is now starting again because everyone number of voices, including um, the ex-head uh, of the Bank of England, yes, the Central Bank, I did say that, Mervyn King is saying, we need to leave, you need to leave without a deal. Let's trade under the World Trade Organization, Article 24, and then let's work out the details afterwards about who we're going to trade with and everything else. Um, now, that's because Mrs May brings her deal three times to Parliament. Three times she's brought the deal. She's now talking about bringing the deal for a fourth time. That ain't going to happen. That cannot happen. And that deal is just to remind everyone leaves us as a vassal state. In other words, we just leave in name only. So, the, just quickly, the EU are pulling a fast one. They have a meeting on the 12th. They, Tusk is saying, I want a special meeting on the 10th because we don't have time. This is interesting. We don't have time to put all the legislation together so we are please pray we need to leave without a deal we are getting closer to that exit door and as i've said before on a number of different platforms the bottom line is this if we don't leave our democracy is finished yeah you're done we're done you're done now here's what i don't understand and and many americans don't understand is how can ms may go back with the same deal so many times and try and resell it is that like i mean what 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 is she thinking well other than being the fact that she's completely lost touch with democracy um and what she's what is desperation to me because what what has happened is that the numbers for her have got better and better and better by keep bringing the deal back that that is what she's done um it's because i think there is no realization she is, cannot come to terms with the fact that actually 
we need to leave without a deal just face that just absolutely face that walk away if you're reading donald trump's book the art of the deal read that chapter where it says in all seriousness you know we joke about it but he refers to that walk away mm -hmm. don't just go i have to sign something i have to make no, an agreement walk away. just walk away and we remember we are the second biggest net contributor to the european union financially we just need to walk away what are you actually scared of i mean last week she even said look if you sign my deal i will resign i mean this is just ridiculous yes okay fine resign um then we'll appoint someone else then we need to find an, a new leader for the party i mean the other thing to say is uh, tied in with that we've also got um conservative associations and i think other other people other parties are going to look at this where they're going to start deselecting their mps that are representing them because their mps are not putting forward the mandate given by the people by a clear ma ma majority of over a million we are in as you said our democracy will be done if we don't leave and we're in incredible incredible turbulent times because everything is being exposed mike are they representing us and what we say and i have to say without naming him where i am i am pleasantly surprised but pleasantly pleased to see that my own personal mp is actually voting along the lines that i would be happy with which would mean that you could say that there's only roughly about 210 of them where the other 440 potentially need to be in the Tower of London already and we don't and we don't have that many uh, cells in the Tower of London to in fact do, do that unless we build some more maybe I need to do a crowdfunder I think you might have to do that yeah yeah we, <laughs> might, we have, might have to do a crowdfunder and build some more cells well I, I, I don't know Mark you know we you and I ran into each other today. We, we folks, we, it's been crazy here. Mark and I have been trying to sit down together for three days to do a show. Uh, and you know how we are. We rant a little bit about this and that. But we uh, ran into each other today at lunch. Mm. And we got into what's wrong with America. Now, I know he's a Brit, and that's all good. But what's really wrong with America, and he agrees with this, is we have lost our moral compass. It used to be when you were a young person and you were raised, that you were raised to believe in God, country, and family. But today, that's all gone. What do, what do, what do we do, Mark? How do we bring this all back into perspective? You're asking a... A huge question that needs in many hours maybe me loads of time to discuss it but on the other hand I think it can be quite simple I mean I was having lunch with a dear friend of mine so I'll give a shout out to Karen um, lovely to meet you and thank you for driving two and a half hours to come and meet me wait whoa, um, whoa, 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 whoa. hang on you're telling me that somebody drove two and a half hours to just meet you absolutely I know it's I a know. bit like me flying in for nine hours just to come and meet you. I know. So I win. <laughs> um, all those other people from yeah. New Zealand, 22 miles, all the Australians. But I, but I hear you. Um, the rumor is there are. I do have some friends. Um, we were discussing this. We were discussing the fact that we are deeply concerned in regard to the younger generation who don't understand the republic they don't understand how it they've forgotten or not been taught how it was formed i, I think they haven't been taught right that's a fair point yeah. so they haven't been taught have they not been taught about why america came about in the first place people fleeing europe this uh, <laughs> yes well this is interesting fleeing europe because of religious persecution um and coming here and as i i uh, i've forgotten the book but a dear friend of mine said you know has always thought that uh, that america was uh, god's gift to uh, the ref in regard to the reformation and the protestants so they haven't been taught they haven't been taught about how the republic is supposed to be functioning and especially when you've got now uh, politicians you know elizabeth I forget which native tribe I thought I'd come from today, Warren. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's that other girl? Uh, um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Ocasio yeah, right. It's fantastic to be able to say that together and sit in your <laughs> yeah, good? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> it feels uh, yeah, good. It? Yeah. Um, but the, the key thing is, is that they are now talking about getting rid of the Electoral College. I know. Now, a load of 
a load of young people, if they don't understand the checks and balances that you have per state, per power and size of state, to defend the states that are smaller than other states, for argument's sake, in regard to, say, something like California, the amount of power that they have. So they want to get rid of that. They don't understand that. And then it's all about, well, we'll have a minimum wage, we'll have socialism, we'll all live off the government, everything will be fine, and all this kind of thing. There, there is no debate about those issues. They don't know. They don't know what that means or the consequences of that. And also thinking, and there is no doubt about it. I mean, we have this at home. The last thing, the last thing we want is to see young people in debt in regard to going to university, et cetera, et cetera. We don't, I don't want to see that at home. I mean, with my own son doing something that what I would know will lead to a job. Part well, I mean, here, here, Mark, here's the problem, and, and you're, you're preaching to the choir. You're talking to a guy who has put four children through college. Wow. Okay, my own son, you know, he went to graduate school and he got a, a very specific doctorate so that he could he could teach at the university. Mm -hmm. Now, he's a little liberal. He's not total liberal. My daughter is going to medical school. Mm -hmm. That's great. My stepdaughter and my stepson got, like, uh, liberal arts degrees. Right. When they get out of school, when, well, one of them's out of school right now. The other one's about ready to get out of school. If they can get a job at McDonald's, that's a good thing. So what a waste of money. What a waste of money. I, I couldn't agree with you more. What they're teaching in the colleges today mm -hmm. is not useful. It's no, not something... No. I mean, I, I, I think if, if, if I was a parent again, uh, of, in... Thank you, Jesus, I won't be. But if I was a parent again and had to raise a child, I'd want them to go to a trade school. I'd want them to learn to use their hands, be a carpenter, be a welder, be an auto mechanic, something that they could do that was of value. Instead of this, like, crazy thing that we do here in the States, I don't know if you guys well, do Well, I mean, we do. I mean, under, under Tony Blair. Uh, when he was prime minister, um, he uh, he, they as a government were encouraging more and more people to go to university. My, on a personal level, my youngest son has just got an apprenticeship with a rather big company, which is amazing, and he will, and I'm very proud of him for that, and he has just got that. So that means that he will then be on a salary, he will not be incurring these any debts. So Debt, it's four, right, four years. Right. So. We are not saying, we are not saying, don't go to university, don't study. What we're saying is, as well, is that, com well, companies have actually said this, and you and I have discussed this in the past, where it says, right, we're getting all these youngsters along, they haven't got any common sense. In fact, we'd much rather them do an apprenticeship with us from day one, so we can train them in the way that we actually need. And if they can do that and not have the debt, that would be fantastic. What happened at home at one point, there was a restriction on apprenticeships. It was, oh yeah, right, we want to go to university and all the rest. Really? Yeah, but actually, that then, in other words, we have an education system where one size fits all, and now it's um, you have to be in school up until you're 18. Where in many ways, particularly I think for a lot of young boys, it would have been good if they'd actually left school at 16, gone and got, I did that, gone and got a job, didn't do me any harm, gone and got a job, and then if you want to, come back. I then trained as a, as a teacher later in life and went to university. Um, so you can do all, all of that. We need different avenues. One size doesn't fit all, and the, that is part of our problem. Where in Germany, other places in Europe, I think particularly in Germany, I think at 14, you may be able to go to a certain particular college. Some of the education is different, and you're right, it's then geared in regard to trades and all the rest. We haven't we haven't had that. And we need to have we need to have that. And the other well th listen, listen, Mark, I'm, I'm and and this is gonna really piss some of you <laughs> off out there, but are you surprised that I... Well, no, no, okay. I am not surprised. Right, this is really going to piss some I've, I've flown in 9,000 uh, miles I believe, I believe that we should do <laughs> and have here in the United States what Israel does, where when you get out of high school, 
mandatory you have to go and serve your country mm -hmm. for a couple of years in the military why do i think that that's important because when you graduate from high school at 18 years old i know you think you know everything there is mm -hmm. to know mm -hmm. about the world mm -hmm. but you don't mm -hmm. and if you go in the military and you have a couple of years of yep. someone telling you this is yep. what you'll do this is yep. when you'll wake up this yep. is what you eat yep then you will understand when you complete that service mm. what it is you really want to do mm. and 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 you'll appreciate and understand what it means to give of yourself mm. for your country mm. but we don't do that here yeah. we, we 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 here are like oh little boo boo bear little <laughs> you know i mean oh come on honey <laughs> Oh. Snowf snowflakes are us. Snowflakes are yeah. us, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like my, my stepson worked for a company called Snowflake. Oh, my goodness. They named an actual company Snowflake. Snowflake. But, I mean, you know, I, and I don't want to I don't want to rag too much, guys, on mm. uh, the younger generation and all that. But as Americans, it, it, actually, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move off of that and not even say as Americans. As the remnant body of Christ, it's time for us to stand up and raise our kids to be able to step up to the plate and do things and not worry whether it will be difficult for them. My father never worried about if what I was going to have to do was hard. As a matter of fact, he was like, do this because it's going to be hard mm. and you'll test yourself and you'll see who you can really be mm. you know and, and I just think that's where we're at I mean that 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 I mean you know I, I think what's going on on your side of the pond mm. and what's going on on our side of the pond I think they're like that well they are and it's and it's um, going back to that question when you know we were saying what are we what can we do about it there is a massive education process that needs to go on. We need to use all the tools that we can, media-wise, to educate the masses to say, look, socialism leads to communism. Look what was happening within Europe. Look how how people suffered, et cetera, et cetera, and what they actually went through. Because the number one thing that the communists feared is, is, is uh, Bible-believing Christians. Oh, absolutely. Because, they, because at the end of the day, if we are... And this is a challenge to all of us, and I am saying this to myself, that if we are really committed to our faith, then we're really prepared to lay ourselves on the line. Because at the end of the day, we're either saying that we have eternal life, not as some kind of bus ticket that says we can behave or do whatever we want, but our discipleship that we have in following Christ. That's the key thing, because they can't take that away. They cannot take that away. They can't take your salvation away, and that's why mm -hmm. they are then uh, incredibly, incredibly fearful of that. So when we get to a generation where we've forgotten um, what the the uh, Nazis were up to in persecution of the Jews, if we forget that, if we forget what the uh, what Joseph Stalin did, you know, putting people in various uh, gulags and all the rest, right. and murder, murdering, uh, you know, we look at the... And, and, and we're not making that no, no, no. up. No. That happened. No. This I mean, is and, and that's, and Mark, I, I got to say, now you got me fired up again. Mm -hmm. That's what I got to say. That for some reason, we today are afraid to teach our children mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. What actually happened? Well, it's yeah. like it's like oh I don't want to tell them that things were not always good. Socialism is communism. Mm -hmm. It's all it is is the redheaded stepchild. It's the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's what happens, mm -hmm. and then you go from socialism to full blown communism, and then you have everybody's putting their hands up saying, "Oh, what happened? Well, you gave away your freedom. That's what happened. We have here in the United States, as you well know." A constitution we have a bill of rights okay the, the the teachers in the universities here in our own country right now are saying that both the constitution and the bill of rights are out of date and we need to rewrite them to update them to meet current times i don't know 
I'm not buying that. Well, until until you uh, until you came off the gold standard, um, <laughs> as uh, Mike was saying the other day, I think you have been doing extremely extremely well and what it stands for and all the rest i mean as i say constantly back home we are a democracy we do not understand what we are just about i think uh, if we don't leave the eu we won't be and we don't have we don't have a, a sort of written down constitution on one sense but then again you could argue that under magna carta of 1215 12 12 12 15 that we do have that and that is what you have based a lot of your constitution on in regard to Magna Carta. We then don't necessarily, some people argue, we don't have a constitution but we have codified law when we there is something that's written which is rather convenient for various people to then ignore. Mm. So now it seems, and just a reminder, you know, in 1973 when we entered the EU, literally overnight we lost the sovereignty of our nation. That is fact. If people want to look into the history mic right so back here it's saying to young people somehow and this is horrible and you you said it in fact you said it a few hours ago does it have to get really really rough for people to miss what they thought that they had but the problem is if it does how do you then turn that back and will you be in a position to then turn that back that's the other that's the other key thing and all right it's a bit of a plug you've seen it and then when I get it on the net so I've I've recently made another short film drama about communism that comes out when it comes out on the web it can make people think it's a powerful film let me tell you folks I happen to be blessed enough to be able to get like a sneak peek at this when it's ready to go mm. I mean it's gonna be huge Thank you. It's an amazing film. So listen, that, that, that's going to kind of wrap it up for mm -hmm. Mark and I here in the United States. Uh, we love all of you guys. We're, we're, we're trying to do this once a week, come out here and just talk to you about the stuff that is happening mm -hmm. on his side of the pond. And on your side and of the pond. on our side of the pond. Yeah. And we're here for all of you, and don't forget, like we always say here on the Washington's Report, there's nothing you can't do with Jesus in your heart, except nothing at all. In the background, you can see Taylor Joseph. He is working his rear end off it to make us look good. It wouldn't happen. Here, the Watchman wouldn't happen no. if it wasn't for him. No, I mean, it wouldn't happen. I mean, can you imagine? Look at, look at, look at. Hello, there. It wouldn't happen. It well, wouldn't happen. No, 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 come on. I mean, you know. That man makes us <laughs> look yeah, good. Yeah. So. We better work look harder. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God bless each and every one of you. We'll see you next time here on The Watchman's Report.